Now that's a Lutheran church. I thought Lutheran churches were only called, you know, Trinity, Emmanuel. They only have these certain names. But no, we went to the Church of Joy. And I was going through it and talking to the, the pastor there who was leading the worship, and I asked him, where did they get the name? And I found out it came from Nehemiah chapter 8. And what the amazing thing was, I flew back into town on Tuesday, I come to church on Wednesday, and guess what our pericope reading was for today? Many of us would look at it as being ironic, but our text for today is Nehemiah 8. The same is what the church was I went to. To me, that gave me a little bit of joy to see God working in such a small way. And while I was out there, we visited with these two men that are church planners, and you can hear their joy, and you can hear their sorrow, and yet what I saw in both of them is they still had this joy. What I found amazing is one gentleman was there, and he's setting up a ministry, and he is setting up a church using attorneys and homeless people, which I just found was the most unusual combination to work to set up a church, but that's what he saw a vision in. And he was already working with the attorneys downtown and those same homeless people that live downtown. And to me, I could see the joy as he experienced this new ministry, this new life that he was living under God, doing something that doesn't make any sense to most of us. You see, our text, Nehemiah chapter 8, he speaks of this. Chapter 8, verse 10. He says, And do not be grieved. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. I'd love to know what the joy is in each of your lives. To me, joy can be so many things. I mean, joy to me is holding your newborn baby in your arms. Joy to me is seeing a pair of children playing together in a sprinkler. Joy is a grandparent sitting on the back porch with their grandchild just talking as it's a beautiful summer day. To me, joy can be found in so many ways, and it's so exciting to think each one of you has a joy. A joy that inspires you in your life. And to that point, I'd ask today when you fill out the registry book on the end of each aisle, take a second and put down your joy for me. Because I want to pray for each of you this week about your joy in your life. That joy that you find in spite of the darkness, in spite of any misery, we each have a joy that we lose. Too often we lose that joy in our life. We lose what inspires us, what God has given us, these little gifts, because we focus too much on the misery. We focus too much on what is going wrong in our lives. You see, Nehemiah, in our text, if we were to go to the beginning of the book, He's been living in slavery. You see, Jerusalem was defeated by the Babylonians. They were all hauled off into slavery. And Nehemiah is found, then the Persian Empire invades, takes over Babylon, and now he's the cupbearer to the king. In our text, he's the governor, but when it starts in the book of Nehemiah, he's the cupbearer. I like to laugh and think of him, he's the water boy. You know, you all seen that movie, right? The water boy. Nehemiah is the water boy who takes the drink to the king so he doesn't get poisoned and drinks from it before every drink the king drinks. But Nehemiah gets a message. His brother shows up and tells him of Jerusalem, who he had just returned from. He said, the walls are toppled. The temple is destroyed. The Babylonians ruined everything. You see, we don't really have a fathom of it right here in Cape Girardeau, but we only have to look to modern-day Haiti. Right now, modern-day Haiti, their walls are tumbled. Many of us like to shrug it off and think, oh, that's because they didn't build it well enough. No, this is a natural disaster, an earthquake. Everything is destroyed. The churches along with the hospitals, along with the people's homes, everything is destroyed, just like in Nehemiah's day. Just the same Nehemiah heard Jerusalem was destroyed, and he wept. He wept as he went before the king, which was Artus Xerxes, went before him to hold the cup for him, for him to drink, and he wept, and the king said, why are you weeping? He says, because my home has been destroyed. 
And what we wouldn't expect out of a Persian king, he said, go and rebuild the walls. Go and I'll send an army with you to help you. He sent Ezra also. We have the book of Nehemiah and the book of Ezra. Hand in hand, side by side, they're working together. Ezra is restoring the temple and Nehemiah is a man just rebuilding the walls of the city. See, God's working through Nehemiah in his sorrow. And you can say Nehemiah is looking for joy. And many of us would like to think he found his joy in the walls being rebuilt. But he didn't. He rebuilt the walls because that's what God let him do. But he didn't find his joy until Ezra found in the temple the words of God. In the destroyed temple, they found the book of Moses, and he got up, they built a pulpit just for that. They built a pulpit so Ezra could get up and read those words, and they found joy. They found joy in the words of God, and so often we think, does that really connect with me today? But I can see it as I see it in the people in Haiti, is they're needing the words of God. They're needing the words of hope right now, because that's why they wept with joy. See, we don't hear, we don't understand why they're weeping, hearing the words of God, because many of us don't come to church and weep. But think of being enslaved for 40 years and being released, and you rebuild the walls, and there it is. The Word of God is still there. The Word of God is still there that they were able to read it to the people. And that's why they wept. They wept with joy because they heard the people in the time of Moses were enslaved, and God remembered them, and God freed them, and the Lord restored them. And Nehemiah's people were enslaved by the Persians, and God heard them, and remembered them, and restored them. And the same word connects today, I'm sure, with the people in Haiti. They will hear their Lord remembers them, and they too will be restored. See, that's the connection. That's the connection today, the joy that we've lost. The joy that we lose because we're so hung up on what's wrong, we lose what God has done. We're so hung up on what should be, what's not right, why isn't it working the way it should, and we lose what the Lord has already done for us through His Son, Jesus. See, that's the joy today. We each have individual joys, but the ultimate joy is in God's Word. And God finds joy in our strength. In our strength in hearing His Word. God finds joy in the strength of our faith, which He gave us it's repeated over and over in the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul states to the people, Have you been thinking all along that we have been defending ourselves to you? No, we have been speaking in the sight of God as those in Christ. And everything we do, my dear friends, is for your strengthening. In Acts chapter 14, Paul preached the good news in the city that won a number of disciples. They returned and strengthened the disciples and encourage them to remain true to the faith. See, I gave us that special confession and absolution directly from Nehemiah's words because if you take it home and read it again, it still relates today. We're still broken. We're still in need of a Savior, and it still relates today because we ask God for His forgiveness, and He gives it to us. God gives us His forgiveness his grace and His glory, and that is our strength. And His word is our joy. So today, I hope and I pray that you can let the misery go. Let the bad things go and remember the joy. The joy of why you're here. The joy of what God has done. And He's done it all for you. Amen. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, be in hearts and minds as we joyfully pray over to you. Amen.